Hi everyone, Steve Crosby here. Welcome to this issue of Monday Morning Musings. Going to continue on a little bit of interpretation stuff. When we come to the scriptures, all of us bring our history. That includes our Western history of philosophy. What I mean by that is that even when we read the scriptures, we have influences of how we have been taught and what we have been taught about truth. There are influences that have been present in the Western church for literally centuries. The ancient church, you know, first century, second century church, did its best to present the gospel in a way that related to the world that they were in. And they were in a world and dealing with Greek philosophy. And the church adapted some Greek philosophical terms. And sometimes they did a good job with it. Sometimes they did a poor job with it. And sometimes they went too far with it. It's too much for us to get into in depth here now. But just to say that all of us in the West have been influenced by certain presuppositions. And here's what they are. And they're all detrimental to an Eastern, Semitic, Jesus and Paul sort of way of looking at truth. Number one. Neoplatonism. Now you're going to have to look these up. This is from Plato and has to deal with the nature of truth and the perfect and what is perfect and how do you get to spiritual perfection. There's a lot of lingo in there that I hear a lot of times in, in Christian circles. People think they're being biblical and they're really being Neoplatonic. Look up Neoplatonism. Another one is Aristotelian logic. The, the, the methodologies of reasoning that came from Aristotle. This was cemented into the church in the Middle Ages, particularly in Western European humanist rationalism. And it's a, there are presuppositions of thought and lines of thought and what is reasonable and what is logic and what is not. That, that has infected the church forever particularly since the Middle Ages. And it's particularly prevalent today in Western evangelical uh, Bible study. It's the assumption that if you approach the Bible like a chemistry book and you bring the principles of reason like you bring to any other subject, that you can study the Bible rationally and logically and, and get everything that you need out of it. That comes from Aristotle. And the third one is Gnosticism. Gnosticism is an epic topic Many nuances, but the short version is this, that only spiritual reality is where the real truth is. It's very anti-incarnational. Uh, they'll use languages like the spirit world or the spirit realm or, uh, you know, where reality is is in the spirit realm and we need to uh, go to the spirit realm and touch reality. That's a Gnostic point of view. That's not a Christian point of view. And all of these things affect us when we read the scripture. We need to understand that those powers, those modalities, those presuppositions are affecting everyone who's listening to me today if you've been educated in a Western uh, school, Western university, Western high school, Western grade school. Those are presuppositions. But they really undermine very important things concerning the scriptures. Let's talk about truth. Plato was very concerned about truth. Aristotle wanted to uh, pursue truth. And they have certain presuppositions. Oh. Here's the, the simplest and the, the quickest way I can handle this for you. John 3.21 says this. He that does the truth comes to the light. Now, in our world, what part of speech is truth? Truth is a noun. Truth is, are, are those abstract propositions about reality to which we believe. That's a very platonic point of view. That passage in John is a verbal noun. Truth is not something that you abstractly believe about spiritual realities. Truth is something that you do. A better running with that, he that is doing the truth, or is even better would be, he that's truthing it. Truthing it? What, what does that even mean in English? Well, it's very important. And even Jesus in front of Pilate, you know, where, where Pilate says, well, what is the truth? And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Saints, for a faithful follower of Jesus, truth is not a disposition of belief regarding abstract principles. Truth is something we do. 
Truth is incarnational. And we'll take up some more in some of the next episodes, but this is just to start you off today. So look up Neoplatonism, Aristotelian logic, and Gnosticism, and I'll see you the next time.